Hello, welcome back to the Chandler Burton Podcast. I am your host, Chandler Burton. Today I have some wonderful guests here today. I got Miguel back. Miguel, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Awesome. And we got two new guests here today. Uh, my friend Chisholm. Chisholm, how you doing? Doing good. Awesome. And then, of course, Darby. A lot of people have been asking for this because they know that we're homies. So I got my buddy Darby on the podcast. He's yes, one of the- I'm the giant furry monster. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm excited for this year. So I want to appreciate you guys for joining into the podcast here. Uh, today's episode is going to be really simple. We are just four guys looking to talk Star Wars, kind of to see where it started, how it impacted us here, how we see the new movies. It's just going to be a simple, lighthearted conversation. No planning went into this. We're just going to talk what's on our minds. But I think it's really important that we give each other some Star Wars names. Darby? What's your Star Wars name? Shasso Kais. <laughs> I don't know what that is. What's the Shasso Kais? So, so actually, it was, it's a it's a bit of a complex joke because uh, me and uh, <laughs> me and a buddy were laughing about how uh, the town names in Warhammer 40k. Um, if if you take them really out of context, they sound like really really just the most ostentatious uh, Jedi names ever. It's just like, oh my god, there's Jedi Master Shasso Kais with his, with his freaking lightsaber trident. Oh. Wow. That's pretty cool. Dude. I was thinking more like Darth Darby. But, uh, that... Oh, no, no. What is it? I, I, go, with, I, go, I, go, I, I go by Darth Darbyus on League of Legends. Oh, you do, huh? Mm-hmm. There you go. That's awesome. Alright, so you got a Star Wars name? I guess Darth King. Dar- Ooh, Darth King. That's awesome. That makes sense. That's actually yeah, pretty yeah. sick. That's All right. right. I don't know if I have one for me. I don't know. I'm thinking uh, C... No, not C-3PO. I can't really make a joke with that <laughs> one. I don't know. What about... Uh, Chan Baca? Chan Baca. You know what's funny? That <laughs> might actually fit. Thanks, dude. That'll do. All right. That, that'll do, Donkey. That'll do. <laughs> like, like, what's it... <laughs> Sorry to sidetrack, but literally, you just throw Baca on the end of anything, and boom, you have a Wookiee name. There you go. Sweet. All right, Miguel needs a name now. Uh, man. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Obi. Short notice. Short notice. <laughs> Obi Miguel Kenobi? Nah. Mm, Doesn't flow well. Kylo Beans. Kylo <laughs> Beans. <laughs> Kylo, <laughs> Kylo Beans. That's actually pretty clever, dude. That's awesome. All right, guys, so we're going to go in to talk about Star Wars here. Whoever wants to jump in, we're going to talk about anything Star Wars. We're going to get to The Last Jedi here at, probably at the end. So oh, I know. We'll, we'll talk about that. So how has Star Wars impacted you guys, personally? Whoever wants to go? No one? No one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I got Another something here. So right. I got something here. So I re- I'm one of my fondest memories from my earliest, earliest childhood, from when I was like four, was when uh, the, um, what was it, the first special edition was coming out on VHS, and my uh, grandparents took me to see A New Hope uh, at, uh, you know, the one, you know the one cheaper theater that's like oh, half Dennis? price? Um, no, not not the canvas one, uh, but the one uh, um, way up uh, oh, near the mall. It's like the dollar one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, oh, the that, plaza. Yeah, the plaza. Yeah, yeah. So, so my grandparents took me there, and I got to see a New Hope special edition in theaters, and wow. that cool. was that just oh so nice. <laughs> so nice. Oh so nice. yeah, that's awesome, dude. So I nice. I actually haven't seen any of the originals. In theaters, I'd like to, because I know they re- they re-released them a few times, so. They did, like, Empire Strikes Back in, like, 3D a couple of years ago. That would have been really cool, but awesome, dude. Chisholm, do you got any good memories of Star Wars? Yeah, well, I grew up with the uh, original trilogy VHS set. Oh, VHS. So, yeah, I got to watch that a lot. Same here. And then, you know, as a kid, that's when the, the prequels came out. Which I actually thought were good back then. <laughs> dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? They're still great. Those are the best movies ever made, especially Attack of the Clones, dude. Oh, Attack of the Clones is a masterpiece. I don't awesome. know, man. I actually, right like, like, in terms of the prequels, I actually prefer, like, one and three. I, I can't watch the middle part of two. It's, it... it Wait, just... the middle part of two? Or, or like, all of it? Because it's all bad. I was no, just no, kidding. No, 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 because the thing is, like, the beginning of two is, is okay because it's, like, really, really action-y, and the ending of two is good because it's also action-y. But that middle part where we have uh, Hayden Christensen uh, awkwardly um, talking uh, about uh, his relationship uh, things uh, and stuff is just kind of like, oh, it's just like, no, I'm like, you know. <laughs> 
Can okay. I stick my finger in your ear? <laughs> <laughs> Let me float this pear over to you for you to cut awkwardly in <laughs> I forgot about that part in Attack of the Clones. Mr. Lucas, am I doing the motions correct to make the CGI pear float? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the second one, right? That's yeah, a, it's Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that's the sorry. that one. That's one with sand. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't okay. like, I don't the like sand. Yeah, sand. The second one for me was like always. I always like ask myself like, what happened? Like, what happened? What, what happened? Because exactly. I always forget. Because like that movie was so. I don't know. It was like boring to me. It was boring. It was oh, yeah, bad. So. Horribly just CGI. It was terrible. <laughs> but man, is it mean potential? Well, dude, the thing is, though, I'd rather, yeah, yeah, dude, the the thing is, though, I'd rather pop in that movie and watch it with you guys than the newer ones because it's just so funny. Oh yeah, much rather watch those. But anyway, my uh, then, well, do you want to go? Do you have any good memories from Star? Want me to go? Okay. Well, Star Wars for me, I think I got a little, I got a little late to the game with Star Wars, a little bit. I remember seeing all the prequels in theaters with my dad, Phantom Menace back in '99. I think Attack of the Clones was 2002, and the Revenge of the Sith I think was 2005. So I remember seeing all those. With my dad, I remember loving them as a kid, watching them now. Well, Revenge of the Sith is still pretty good. But um, I remember actually in eighth grade, I remember I got pneumonia. I was sick for like a week and a half and I couldn't go to school. I remember they were showing all the Star Wars episodes on FX. I was like, you know what? I have never seen the original trilogy, so I'm just going to watch it. And literally, I fell in love with all three of those movies, dude. Like Empire Strikes Back is one of my favorite movies. It's impacted me to want to be a filmmaker or just like love movies. It's like the impact it's had on me personally is incredible. That was one of the best movies ever made. And then I saw the new ones, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Miguel, buddy, do you have any good memories with Star Wars? Video games, movies? Yeah, I mean, like, I've always thought Star Wars was pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm, like, like a super huge fanatic, but, like, I've seen all the Star Wars. I've played, like, Battlefront 1 and 2, like, the oh, original so ones. Good. Love those games. Which are still my favorite Star Wars games. Yeah. Like, I mean, Star Wars has always been pretty cool, you know? It's just, uh, I don't know, maybe, like, through my youth, I didn't, like... I did actually didn't even see the, like, the the prequels, like, when they were... Because those were coming out, like, when me and Chisholm were, like, kids. I mean, all of us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember because, like, I grew up with Chisholm. Like, yeah, you did. Yeah, we you were did, yeah. In school and stuff. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I didn't, like, when they were coming out, I didn't even watch them. Like, I hadn't even seen them until, like late high school i just like i yeah. bought the movies and i just watched them because like i everybody always talked about star wars and i was like yeah you have all, i've seen like the the like four through six or whatever yeah and those were cool and i really like those and i remember watching a new hope in uh like seventh grade or you something. know what we did actually yeah, so yeah. I, I guess i just lied because we did watch it in <laughs> seventh. Remember, it was miss donnelly actually we yeah. talked about her a couple episodes and ago and actually i think <laughs> Yeah. I think I actually that's the first time I remember watching the movie. I know I watched the movie a long time ago when they like released it in theaters one time when I was like yeah. a little kid. And but I don't remember anything about the movie. So that time in 7th grade watching the movie in, in class, that was like my first experience of actually like watching Star Wars and remembering what it was about and stuff. Yeah. And so then I was like, "Oh, this is Star Wars. I get it. Like <laughs> this is yeah. cool." For sure, but, like, then in high school, I watched, like, the prequels and stuff. <laughs> Sorry. And I was like, wait a second. Like, You're like, what? What, what just, what just <laughs> why happened? Why do people like Star Wars? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like I just, yeah. I don't know. The prequels didn't quite do it for me until until the the last one, though. The, uh, Road of the Seth? Yeah, episode three. Yeah, yeah. That, that, one's, yeah. that one's still pretty good. It's, got, it's still got some moments. With General but... Grievous in it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one. That one's cool, because I thought, I thought he's pretty cool. And, he like, is cool. And, like, I kind of looked him up a little bit, and, like... His backstory is pretty cool. Yeah, dude. He is pretty cool. So, I don't know. That's yeah. good. That's good, man. Now, dude, Run of the Sith is my favorite prequel. I, to be honest, I prefer that movie over the, the new ones, to be mm. honest. But, oh, really? Yeah, man. I, uh, yeah, Run of the Sith was good. It had some moments in there that I was like, oh, that's still pretty yeah, yeah. bad. It's still like... Like, the part at the end where the, the alien... I don't know what they were. Like, the robots, they're like, well, Padme's given birth, but she's kind of lost a little oh, bit. Right. I'm like, <laughs> is that is that a real thing? Darby, weren't you going to be a nurse? Is that uh, a real thing? It is it is possible, <laughs> but oh, oh my it. god, is it tricky uh, to have something like that when you're that young? And I think I think Robot Chicken uh, um, did it the best in critiquing that. They're just like, oh my God, we're this medically advanced civilization, and yet uh, we can't save her because she's lost the will to live. What is this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Dude. Yeah, there's a few more. Or the Darth Vader, the, uh, the no! Like, oh, that was yeah. the worst. <laughs> That was terrible. Should have just screamed instead. Yeah, that's what they did in the Japanese version. Uh, um, in Jap- the Japanese dub, he just yells. See, the Japanese get it. Can you, can, dub. Can, you, can you give us an example of what it sounded like, Darby? <laughs> Damn. I'm glad there it sounded like that. There were some things that I thought were cool, though, from like the prequels, like the uh, the droidicas, the ones that like turn into like balls. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. dude. And and then you could play that them in Battlefront too. I was like, oh, yeah, this that was is cool. cool. You know, like, yeah. I wish they would do more stuff with that. Well, the, it's funny because like I remember seeing, I remember even as a kid, I remember being so excited for Phantom Menace. I remember like you see a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away, goes black for a second, then Star Wars pops on the screen. Everyone's like, yeah, and then it literally says. The Trade Federation. Like, dude, this movie's about, like, freaking <laughs> politics. politics yeah, yeah. Like, what are we getting into? And then you're just like, man, fancy. Two hitmen have so... come to check and make sure that your Amazon parcels can get through without thievery. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, what happened? And then, honestly, Attack of the Clones is still my least favorite. Phantom Menace at least had Darth Maul, which was yeah. really cool. You had to wait till the very end to get to that and point. Duel the Fates. Yeah, Duel the Fates. Yeah, Duel the Fates. Yeah, yeah. Was the best Pod Race was cool, too. Yeah. Um, what were you gonna say, Miguel? No, pod racing is cool too. Sure. That game was it, cool. It was actually because that's the only reason why I think episode one for that because they wouldn't have made the games. Yes, dude, I played yes. that's true. The pod <laughs> racing game was my childhood. Okay. Well, oh, you yeah. guys, you guys forgetting the main reason why episode one was so good. You guys are forgetting the main thing. It, no, why? please don't. Why? <laughs> Misa. Yep. No. <laughs> Misa, <Mr. laughs> <John, John, laughs> What's the law from first time up? God, have you? Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> no. So so no. after after he's after he gives power to to uh, um the chancellor. Yeah, I told Chisholm about yeah, why that. Why they make him a politician? Yeah, we'll talk about oh, that. Like so, yeah. so yeah, after they make him a politician, and he gives the power over to the chancellor. Uh, um, like once people kind of figured out that he did that, he got like kicked out of his position and really really disgraced. And in a comic, it shows that uh, he's like missing an eye, and he's just a, he's just a, a poor juggler in the streets now. Really? Yeah, they give him an actually oh. really sad end to his story. Oh, I actually didn't know he had a an end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd I'd like look into that. That's pretty. I didn't know that. But yeah, dude, I was telling just about that a couple a little while ago, where literally in Attack of the Clones, Padme is like, "Okay, here you go, Jar Jar," and literally he gives the power <laughs> to the Chancellor. I was like, "What the?" And so Jar Jar Binks was the reason the fall of the Jedi and the rise of the Empire. Like, George George Lucas, dude, like, what what are we doing, dude? Turn, turn your most <laughs> annoying character into its <laughs> secretly biggest villain. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and I actually thought of that when I was watching Rise of Skywalker. I was like, you know, freaking Jar Jar. I wish he would have popped up in the last episode. That would have been great. Just somehow out of nowhere. That would have been awesome. No, I'm good without Jar Jar. You don't want to be Jar Jar? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's fair. That would have just made everything worse. For these new, the new trilogy. Oh, we're gonna get into that, dude. <laughs> they didn't need that. No, yeah, they, no. They, they had a lot of problems. So, to be honest, though, so I don't think I've actually asked you, Darby. I know what these guys think, but so out of all the Disney movies, so there's the three episodes: Rogue One and Solo. Um, what do you think of the new Disney Star Wars movies? I think Rogue One's probably the best of the whole. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. I think we all Definitely. agree. Rogue, am, Rogue One was I, the best. It was refreshing that we got a Star Wars movie that was less about the mysticism and more about uh, the boots on the ground soldier aspect of the Galactic Civil War. And yeah. uh, um, what's it? As far as the other ones go, um, I'm gonna give Solo a pass because <laughs> I didn't have as big of an issue with it at all. I didn't find it unfunny. It was actually entertaining. I'd happily watch through that. The Darth Maul reveal at the end is is really, really good. Um, as for the sequels, I think there's bits and pieces that I like and hate out of all of them. So ultimately, like I'm going to say that out of the three, uh, Force Awakens, I'm going to give a pass. But what's it? Last Jedi. Oh, we're going to get into it right now. <sighs> Okay, here we go. This is what I, we've been waiting I, for, Chisholm. There's aspects of it that I like, but honestly... Do you want one? Oh, sweet. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say right now, and I, okay. I know that I shouldn't Do cuss... Want? Yeah, I'll take a ramen, eh? Um, I, I shouldn't cuss super often through this, so I'm going to I'm gonna try to keep cussing out of my tirade, but Purple Hair Bitch is the worst fucking character in the entire <laughs> goddamn movie. Was her name Fuck Boldor? Her. 
Oh, uh, what's her name? She's just a terrible character. Hold, good, the holder? Yeah, yeah. Like good that. actress, really, really fucking badly written character. Yes. <laughs> Wait, who? The purple girl uh, lady in The Last Jedi. She, the one that, oh, like, after oh, Leia man. after Leia flies around in space, yeah, yeah. that part was awful. I, I remember people laughing at that part. I, I laughed, but also at the same time, I'm just like, I know the expanded canon, you know, this right. makes sense. Oh, it's terrible, dude. Yeah, after Leia, like, float around in space, they hired this purple hair lady to, like, be in charge of, like... You should now! You yeah. gotta do a good job! I'm not gonna tell anyone any of my plans! <laughs> That's exactly the problem. She didn't tell Finn... Finn, not Finn. She didn't tell Poe po, of what was going on. you wanna on. go off and do Maverick things? Fuck you! <laughs> it's true, though, because, like, she didn't tell... And then that's why Finn and... What's her name? Flower? Rose. 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 Flower. <laughs> she, <laughs> I don't remember her name. She's not that recognizable. But I, uh, that's why they went to that casino planet because Ugh. the Purple Hell lady wouldn't tell Poe the plan. So they're like, okay, we're going to do it ourselves. And then at the very end of the movie, it's like it all, it just, it, it's all so bad. That's it's like, oh, my entire plan was to just uh, lead you all along uh, so that way, uh, you know, we'd all think uh, that it was hopeless. Then I'd flip around and sacrifice myself. And one of the only uh, really amazing scenes of the movie. I know. And then literally the the First Order still finds them at the end. So the plan is totally false. Well, just, I mean, they're, it's they're, terrible. The spearhead of their army is at least completely annihilated. That's that's at least uh, the good thing about that. So the remnant force uh, that's left, uh, that's run over by Kylo Ren, is just like, oh my god, there's literally so few of them. We, we can still fucking get them, guys. Come on. I know, dude. Terrible. Chisholm, let's hear it, dude. I'm ready to hear Last Jedi. We talk about it all the time in the car. <laughs> Anytime we talk. Let's hear it, dude. Why do you love that movie so much? What, I love it? Uh, you know, Hodor. Whatever her name is. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. She's the best character ever. Dude, the movie sucks. It just... It's the, so boring. Yeah. It's such a boring movie. It's there was, just... There was one character who was... Okay. But he was so, like, minuscule. Who? Like, the little guy. What was his name? And Last Jedi? I think so. It's a, the, like the little alien guy who like hacks into C three PO. Oh no, that's in uh, that's in. Uh, oh, that's oh. A, oh, that's Rise of Skywalker. Rise Skywalker. Oh, okay, see, they're okay. all so bad you can't figure out oh. which one is which. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd say pretty much the only good part of the Last Jedi was Kylo Ren versus Luke. Oh, the very end. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Again, uh, other I, than that it just sucked. I talk about Last Jedi a lot, and I gotta say, and I can finally say it publicly. Movie is terrible, but it does have some scenes that I'm like, that's actually really cool. Like the scene with Kylo Ren versus Luke, that was cool. The dog fight scene in the beginning is really cool. There's a lot. It's a good looking movie, but it's like polishing a really nice turd. Like it can't really, it can't make it look it's good. It's still a turd. Yeah. It's still a turd. <laughs> I knew the. I knew something was off the minute that Luke threw the lightsaber over his shoulder. I was like, something doesn't feel right about this movie. I don't like this. And Luke was just a jerk the entire film. I'm like, dude, I don't. Some people like that arc of Luke. Like, they need to give him, like, a character arc of where he's been, what he's been up to. I hated it. I thought it was terrible. They could have given him something else. Mm -hmm. We should go back to that once uh, we finish discussing the movies, because I'd like uh, to compare and contrast uh, how Luke is portrayed in The Last Jedi versus how he's portrayed uh, later in the uh, in the legacy canon, because he is... Those two uh, interpretations of Luke are so different. That's interesting. I think that would be pretty cool. And then I feel like because of The Last Jedi, I feel like Rise of Skywalker came out, and I feel like there was so much backlash with that movie, they had to try to fix things that were wrong with The Last Jedi. The thing is, they backpedaled so, so hard that it ended up whipping around, you know? It's like, I thought of a really terrible euphemism, but I think it might be a bit too risque for even this. Should we allow them? Yeah, I got it's a your problem. podcast. Man. Yes, <laughs> Okay, ladies, so ladies have, and gentlemen, seen, get ready. Have you seen the porno black salami? <laughs> no. no. So, Darby, we don't... So, so it's, it's, it's infamous because it's meme material, but this this black guy walks out on a porno set, and he's all like, some guys told me to fuck myself. So I did. And so it shows it's because, you know, he's got one of those big, huge... Porno black cocks. He, he's able to push his own dick up his own ass. <laughs> That's what I did. Oh my god. That's oh. Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> but just, just, <laughs> just add MLG air horn noises as he as he's oh. stroking the dick back and forth. Oh my. 
Whoa! Oh dang, dang! I'm gonna, I'm gonna put like an explicit like note on this. It's a spectacle. It's a spectacle. But are you gonna lose your sponsorship? Okay? No, <laughs> I think we'll be okay. It's Dude, a, it's it's it's. I I don't know what to feel about Rise of Skywalker because it's such a fucking mess, but it's also at least a functional spectacle. Like hmm. there's parts of I don't know I don't know about that. Okay, no, go ahead, go ahead. There's parts of it that I hate, but the, the, like the just the the way they kind of ham fist Palpatine into there, awful. Is yeah, it's just kind of like what the fuck. Oh, that was terrible. There's more terrible. organic ways to do this. Meanwhile, like the end, like I actually didn't. So so really really hot take, really hot take. Like dipping my balls into a deep fryer, hot take. You know I mean? <laughs> um, and that's that. I don't have a problem with Ray. She may be a little Mary Sue, but. Considering Darth Revan exists in the legacy canon and is arguably recanonized because one of those starships was named the Revan. Um, honestly, she's not that bad. A uh, little, a little, uh, a little flat, but not bad. I, I honestly can think of many things way worse than her in the sequels. So true. That's, that's fair. That's true. There, are, there is a lot wrong with those movies. But uh, yeah, going back to Rise of Skywalker, I remember. I remember actually we were all out to eat, and I remember like we just saw right. That's like the last like the last time we all hang, hung out was at Famous Dave's. That place is delicious, by the way. Mm. No, that's that's not a sponsor. That's not a shameless <laughs> plug. Yeah. That place is delicious. But I remember Miguel, you just saw Rise of Skywalker, and I remember you flat out said you hated it. No, yeah, yeah that sucked. <laughs> like, I have nothing good to say about that movie. I mean, did oh, you, yeah. do you think it looked good? Do you think the action was good? I thought. I mean, there was some pretty parts, but I mean, there's a lot of movies that look pretty. So I feel like basically like Star Wars, RPG. the name Star Wars yeah. can't just it can't just fly with just like pretty looks, you know? I like, agree. To me personally, because like Star Wars is such a big name, and they have so you know so much story to go off of to yeah. like put this sloppy Joe together of a movie and like yeah. be like, hey, here you go, enjoy. Like right. no, because a lot of people fell for it too. I remember some friends of mine and like. Like, a, a cousin of mine, I won't say names, because she really loved the movie, and I was, like, sitting right next to her and looking at her, like, like my like my perspective and then her perspective, like, two totally different <laughs> sides of the story. So she loved it and you hated yeah. it? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But she, you know, she just saw the, you know, because it's Star Wars. Right. And she just loved it because it's Star Wars. No matter what, she's going to love it because it's Star Wars. I feel like a lot of people just you know? go see them now. Like, it's Star Wars, I'll just go see it, but... I mean, these movies, especially the new ones, I feel like, so J.J. Abrams did Force Awakens. I feel like he's always good at starting up a franchise again, because as I said before, I think right. Force Awakens is a pretty good film. Definitely better than Last Jedi and better than Rise of Skywalker. Force Awakens, I feel like, had a good setup of, we can go somewhere cool with this. We can maybe, you know, it's kind of like A New Hope, and like could've. maybe, could have is the key <laughs> word. But then it just, I feel like Ryan Johnson came and was like, I'm going to throw everything out the door, do my own thing. And because he did his own thing, Rise of Skywalker really suffered. I mean, I knew the Emperor was going to die again, so I don't know why they brought him back. That was one of my biggest problems. Another problem was that stupid kiss scene. Oh, yeah. That, was the, that should not... They should have not put that in there. No. That was the worst thing ever. They hated each other the entire... Tr well, entire entire trilogy. And then they're like, well, just... Get, like, that's so Disney of them to do that. Yeah, oh, it yeah. It's so Disney. I'm like, oh. And then Rey killing uh, Palpatine, like... Dude, Come on. That was so, the most powerful Sith. Like, ever. are you kidding me? I don't right, care yeah. you're related. Like, I was like, that is the worst. It was just. Yeah. And all the voices, you can do it, Ray. Believe it. I'm like, dude, just, this sucks. Well, just the fact that I yeah. hated it. But, but, did Palpatine purposely kill himself through Ray because he wanted Ray to kill him? I don't know. That's the thing. That'd be cool. Because, like, like, yeah, he that would have been cool. just stopped using Force Lightning and he wouldn't have died. Right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, so okay. So, what do you guys think was the the biggest reason why the this last trilogy, I guess, kind of went downhill? Because the first one was fantastic, in my opinion. Like Force Awakens. You know, like everything was put together so well. Force Awakens. And, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, and then and then it just kind of went downhill, and I don't know. Do you guys think mm. it's because because it was like different directors doing each movie or what? That was part of it. I I Basically, think just it was writing issues. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the problem is just that uh, you know the switch over f between directors uh, for um, 
for uh, um, The Last Jedi was kind of the catalyst uh, for things combined with public opinion. And then mm-hmm. when, as the public opinion kind of decreased uh, more and more, the, the whole, oh, fandom toxicity sort of thing, um, I think that 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 contributed also to the way that uh, The Rise of Skywalker was written in that with how absolutely... Oh my god, I'm burping so much. Um, <laughs> with, how much with how much negative backlash... Uh, was thrown at Disney for uh, for uh, the Last Jedi. I think uh, everything that that ended up happening in the Rise of Skywalker, I think, was just like the biggest knee jerk reaction. Yeah, no, that's totally true. What about you, Chisholm? What do you think? Well, I would say yeah, writing was the biggest issue, and also just not having a real plan. Yeah, there's no plan. Because like, if you watch uh, the Force Awakens, there's like a bunch of characters introduced. Yeah, and then they don't do anything with them ever. What's that orange character's name? Oh, uh, uh, Maz. Oh yeah, yeah Maz. They oh, didn't yeah. do anything I with her. I thought she was gonna think, be like the think about, Yoda or something. Think yeah, kind of. Right at the beginning of the Force Awakens, there was that old guy that knows Kylo Ren. That's right. At the never very mentioned beginning. again. Like, he, like, yeah, he's family. the one that gave him the map to yeah. Luke Skywalker. Like, who was that guy? Who? What, what the <laughs> heck? Yeah, that's. Th- it, there's just so many characters. They just drop the ball on like Finn. Yeah, Finn was one of my favorite characters. They did. They did him dirty. Dude, okay, before I give my they hot take... Captain Phasma as well was another one. <sighs> yeah. I, what a well, big disappointment. What yeah, a huge... Because, be a because cool, she... Like, thing. Yeah, because she... kind of was, but we don't really know why. Yeah, she yeah. was in like a lot of the marketing for like Force Awakens. Yeah. Especially. She, they they amped, amped her up to be like this huge character, barely in the movie. And I was right. like, this sucks, dude. But yeah, no, I agree yeah. with Chisholm with Finn. Finn, his character arc was so interesting. I was like, dude, I really like... What they did with him, and then like Force Force Awakens, he was great. I was like, dude, you're awesome. Like, you're fantastic. Last Jedi, I again, I think his performance obviously it's good, but I just felt like they didn't know what to do with him. So they kind of just like, all right, we're gonna put you with this new love interest. There's like four <laughs> love. There's like three love interests from in the movie. I say right, really? every movie. So there's person. there's the Rose girl. Yeah. I think. I Ray, there's Ray. Ray. There's definitely like yeah, something and then that was supposed to be there. Let's be yeah. honest. Him and Leia together. Ooh. <laughs> just kidding but no but for real like I feel like they didn't know what to do with Finn's character so they're like yeah we'll kind of just push him to the wayside I thought the other big problem with Last Jedi was Ray and Finn weren't together and I know they didn't meet till the very end and I know you can tell different stories but I don't know it just was a real disappointment to me but they, no, also, they also should have made Kylo Ren way more threatening <clears throat> yeah like yeah. in the first movie when uh, Kylo and Ray fight at the end Kylo should have smoked Ray. Dude, he sucked. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That would have oh, made it geez. so much better. If he I feel. I feel like. Her. I feel like his wound may have been an excuse for him to not fight as well. But at the same time, it's just like, goodness gracious, man. If yeah. you put me up against like a professional, like world champion boxer, and stab him, he'd still knock me out. Right. right. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like there's. I wouldn't do anything. And again, I I can forgive the movies if they were actually good. Like, when, when you watch, like, for example, to give my take of what you asked, Miguel, I agree with Chisholm and Darby. The the directors was a huge problem, because the first one was supposed to be J.J. Abrams, then it was Ryan Johnson and Trevin Trevorrow. He's doing the new Jurassic World movie, oh, I no. think, or something. Oh. But he was supposed to do Rise of Skywalker. And I actually have looked up, like, what the Rise of Skywalker, like, his version was going to be. I'll have to show you guys. It's actually pretty cool. But uh, I think the, la- the directors... Um, uh, they just brought J.J. back saying, do you want to do this? Force Awakens did good, and you want to come back and do that? Um, and I feel like there was no plan. And I, know, if you look at the Marvel movies, like I know Disney owns Marvel as well. They've been doing like 23 movies leading up to like Endgame. And like not all the movies were great in my opinion, but at least they had a plan where all the movies connected. They all had a giant like idea of what they wanted to do. Star Wars couldn't even do that with like three movies. And it's like Star Wars has been around for like over 40 years. And it's like... I feel like they just brought it back because they knew people like me were going to go see it. They're like, we know people right. like Chandler's like, they're going to pay like five times to go see it because it's Star Wars. And it just bothers me that like they didn't, I feel like they didn't put a lot of effort into it. Like I feel like there was no effort, the lack of planning and the directors and Kathleen Kennedy was a huge problem. Cause I feel oh, like, man. I feel like she was like, okay, you got to do it this way or it's not going to work. And that's just my opinion. I don't know her personally. She could be a very nice lady. 
I don't like how she runs things at Lucasfilm. That's what it seems to be like. That seems like it's a lot yeah. of her from what I've seen. Oh, yeah, but which I, I'm glad that I've been hearing rumors that she might step down. But I've, also I've heard, heard that, too. I've heard stupid rumors that potentially yeah, the sequel trilogy might be made non-canon also. I've heard that as well. I've heard some people are trying to, like, that, that doesn't count. And the thing is, though, I've always thought of this, and this is with video games is with anything as well. Like, when I watch something or when I play something, I need to think to myself, does it need a sequel? Did I, did I think we needed something after Return of the Jedi? No, I don't think we did. I thought Return of the Jedi ended perfectly. Yep. Force Awakens, I mean, again, it was good, but it's like, was Episode Seven really necessary? I don't think it was, personally. I mean, again, I liked it, but I'd rather just see a bunch of spinoff movies. Like, Rogue One I liked. Yeah. Um, Han Solo I thought was okay. I thought it was all right. So it's like, I'd rather see the spinoffs, but I don't think we needed any more episodes, personally. Yeah. And they just announced three more Star Wars movies. The next one comes out in, like, 2021? And there's going to be two more after that. I don't know what they're going to be. Do you guys have an idea of what they think? Do you, what do you guys want them to be? If you, let's say, I, let's I say, I definitely what? tell you what I don't fucking want them to be. Okay. Okay. Let's hear so, that. so I was going to get into this uh, um, a little later, but this feels like the right thing now. I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this by saying Kathleen Kennedy's uh, choice to ignore what was the canon original. Oh yeah, we oh, just yeah. talked about that. Was a really really terrible idea because it's just like oh there's nothing there's no yeah like, she said that you, you fucking lying motherfucker I'm gonna <laughs> tell you right now there's an entire expanded universe you could go into look at all this stuff there's books there's comics there's tabletop vi- role playing games there's video games why are you saying there's nothing it's all giant corporate cash grab. When they it is. That's they, exactly what it they is. They would have had a more solid thing had they taken some. But out of all that expanded universe content, I have to tell you right now, the Yuzhong Vong arc, which was a set of books, is honestly, I hope they never adapt it. Because okay. it... Let's just, let's just put it this way. What are some of the things you like about Star Wars? Like in general? Or? In general. The forest. The full, Jedi, yeah, Sith. Je- yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just really like the story. The lightsaber. I just yeah. lightsabers. It's, just, and, it's the world. The, the world of it. Yeah, I just really. I'm going to tell you right now, my poor sympathies, because in the Yuzhong okay. Vong arc, the Yuzhong Vong oh, are an alien race yeah. that basically flipped the entire Star Wars universe on its damn head. Because it's just like, oh yeah, we could we we could fight them traditionally. We have a ship as big as a planet, and it's just like, okay, it's alive. What? Yeah, all of our <laughs> technology's alive. We're a scary ass race that likes scarification, replacing our body parts with symbiotes. <laughs> okay, and it's just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know your lightsabers? Yeah, what about them? We we shoot beetles out of our arms. Okay, I can just. Why are the beetles deflecting off my lightsaber? We see, you see, we come from another galaxy where there were these where there are these two <laughs> warring droid species. So we had to develop biotechnologies that could resist energy weapons. Why is your armor deflecting my lightsaber? Fuck you, that's why. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to use the force. Nothing happens. Why is it the force working? We're immune to the force because we're from a galaxy where midichlorians don't exist. (laughs) That's wild, man. Okay, that okay. So I I don't want to see that either. If that's gonna be, <laughs> and that's so gonna be a movie. And so it gets just turns into this whole mess of Star Trek slash war. Oh yeah, Coruscant gets destroyed. The world ship eats it. No. Oh. Uh, Nar Shada, if anyone knows uh, about that planet from the expanded universe, that's get, that gets destroyed. The Huts, which with Jabba the Hutt's death uh, already got fucked over really hard. Yeah, their main planet, now Hutta, gets destroyed also. So the Huts are basically borderline on extinction, which, honestly, good. They should have been extinct. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, but anyway, oh. so, so that all happens, and the only... Oh yeah, also, this is when... Uh, what's it? We, we, get, we get a tragic and epic scene where Chewbacca dies, saving Han and Leia's son in that timeline, um, because... What's it? He he. They're on the last ship to get on there, and Chewbacca throws uh, um, Anakin Solo. Yes, that was that was Leia and Han's son in that timeline. Throws him onto the ship, and uh, as they rocket away, Chewbacca stuck on Coruscant as it fucking explodes. So what happens? 
Yeah, pr- pretty much. And <laughs> what was it? And then a bunch of other things uh, happened, but basically uh, it just turns into, you know all the political shit that, um, that makes the prequels unfun? We, oh yeah, oh. we get a bunch of that between the New Republic, the the Galactic uh, Empire remnant, and uh, the Mandalorians, and so they're just like, so so the Yuuzhan Vong are taking slaves. How are we going to defeat uh, them? And it's just like, we're going to make human replicant droids. Wait, what? Literally Terminators in Star Wars. Wow. Hiding amongst the slave stock the Yuuzhan Vong take up, and it's just like suddenly out of nowhere, these humans are are literally gorily ripping these aliens to pieces, and when they cut through them, you see the fucking endoskeleton, and it's just like, why are we Terminator suddenly? And then <laughs> the planets planets are blowing up, uh, massive things, just like, it, it's, it's, it was a chunk of Star Wars where they decided to drop the mysticism and uh, aspects of Star Wars that gave it its identity to to give it a threat that ultimately ultimately is resolved because hi i'm a yuzhong vong that isn't into all that creepy shit and i actually have midichlorians i can use the force and then all of them are like black buggy black oh, buggy dude, scared me. <laughs> oh, i took a drink and that scared me holy <laughs> crap dude last buggy <laughs> it keeps going <laughs> and so and so basically half the yuzhong vong are just like wait so we can le- live in peace, and the other ones uh, go uh, basically full uh, um, um, running amok uh, and are just destroying as much shit as they can in a suicidal rage until they're finally called. Oh yeah, Luke. Luke doesn't die in that uh, um, part, but he does do something that's that is actually pretty Mary Sue. He is able to defeat an entire an entire battalion of the Yuzhong Vong by becoming one with the Force for a short time, which allows him to basically do insane, insane shit with the Force, like literally throwing uh, people into space and other things. Wow. So, so you, yeah. don't, you don't want to see that? I don't want to see it! <laughs> okay, big threat. Like, okay. I, I wouldn't mind if they did a Revan story. Yes, that would be cool. You know, Knights Old Republic is super popular. There actually is a rumor that uh, they might get Keanu Reeves to. That would be yes! amazing. Hey, that would be cool. Go. Yes. Oh, <laughs> you excited? Yes. <laughs> it's two of my favorite things: the Old Republic and Keanu Reeves. All right. right. Yes. Oh. Awesome, dude. That's so good to hear. I feel like if, they, <laughs> if Disney wants to make a good Star Wars movie, they should bring in George Lucas to create the world and the story. Yeah, and then have somebody else do the dialogue. That's what oh, I'm saying because okay. he did. A, he yeah. did. He does a good job of like he created this wonderful universe. He's just. He's just. His talent is not writing and human interaction. Human interaction <laughs> whatsoever. There was going to be some weird things he was mentioning about how he wanted there to be a side plot about micronization and interacting with the midi chlorians on a microscopic level. I'm so happy they stopped giving him weed after that. <laughs> 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 oh, I didn't even it know. sounds like a bad drug trip. It's just like, oh yeah, we're gonna micronize the Jedi so that way they can talk with people with midi chlorians on a microscopic. It's just, like, what the fuck are you smoking, George? Oh my god! <laughs> well, they are. I mean, the midi chlorians are—they're like little microscopic organisms. Yes, right? yeah. Like, yeah. They're their own like living being, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That yeah, would, dude. That would be so weird. I would love. I would <laughs> love to see that. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That'd be great. I hope that's the next movie. Midichlorians, a Star Wars movie. I would see that opening night. Not a problem, dude. Not a problem. Miguel, what about you, dude? Is there anything you want to see? It could be anything from a book, a game. Like, is there any like Star Wars movie? If they came to you saying, Miguel, I want you to. What's the next Star Wars movie going to be coming out in two thousand twenty one? Shoot, dude. I don't know. I mean, I kind of agree with Chisholm though. Anything with like the Old Republic, they do more more stuff with yeah. that. That would be really cool. They're doing like a book series. I think they're doing like a new book comic thing about it. But that would be cool. That would be really cool to see something. Yeah, you like could actually that. get some Sith Jedi Wars. Dude, oh, that would be sick. sweet. That would be really I mean, cool. Yes. I mean, like, I would like to see an another like Force Unleashed type of game, like. Not game or a movie? Type of game. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. Not, not Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, yeah. We could talk about that, that actually, like, too. I mean, that was cool, but that was, like, Dark Souls yeah. in Star Wars. Yeah, th- yeah. Like, I wanted, to, I wanted, like, Force Unleashed, like, you're a Jedi, or you're a, you're a Sith. You know, either, either one, I don't yeah. care, but you're hella powerful, and you yeah. can do all these cool things, and you can, like, blast freaking enemies everywhere, just like the Force Unleashed, but, like, 
next gen. Next you know? gen. Okay. I could see that. that would be you awesome. could add like elements of Fable where your actions can like change if you're good or bad. Oh, that yeah. actually see that'd yeah, be really cool. Sure. They actually they just talked about the other day, um I know we talked so you guys know the Uncharted series. Um, the girl, the girl, the lady that ran the Uncharted series, she was making a Star Wars game that was going to be open world and played just like Uncharted, but it got canceled because EA was like, "No, nah, we don't want to do that. It's not going to sell." Oh, so they're wow. like, "Okay." Then they made Jedi Fallen Order, which you know was pretty good. Did you guys like that game? I, I liked really it. fucking I liked it. loved it. I loved yeah. it. I liked it. It was just not what I wanted it to True. be. It feels sure. I mean, it's cool. I, I went in with cool no game. expectations, and honestly, I think even if I had expectations, they would have been completely and utterly destroyed in the best of ways. I loved it. I 100%ed it. Wow. I, yeah. Nice. I, it was refre- I kind of, as much as I liked The Force Unleashed, I also kind of felt it was nice and refreshing to kind of uh, start out a little bit more. You feel more of the Jedi's journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the yeah. mysticism surrounding it. That was cool. And it it, it was interesting interacting uh, with uh, the aspects of, uh, lo- you know, a lost culture in the Star Wars universe as well. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so it, it felt really good. And, you know, I, I pre-ordered it so I could get my favorite lightsaber color, orange. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. You that's can't true. get that if you don't pre-order it? Uh, you can now, I believe. I yeah, think you uh, can now. They actually added a red saber too. Yeah, they did. They, yeah. Yeah. As part of the big uh, thing that they released uh, to uh, give you a new game plus, so that way you could play through uh, from the beginning with all your collectibles, as well as a new challenge mode for the really hardcore players. Awesome. Um, they added a red lightsaber crystal and uh, um, what was it, Cal's uh, Inquisitor outfit from oh, his yeah. nightmare. Yeah, no, oh, for sure. That's tight, dude. All right, guys, so we are going to take a quick little break for the sponsor and for the musical segment, and we will be right back. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast so far. We're going to take a little break here and talk about our sponsor, which is going to be the app that I use to record my podcast on Anchor. Anchor is a great way to make your own podcast for free. It's very easy to do. All you got to do is download the app. It's Anchor from the Apple Store, uh, iOS, or on the Google Play Store. You can also just go to the website anchor.fm to get your podcast started um what's cool about anchor is that it will upload to all streaming services automatically so you don't have to worry about that you can just sit back and record your podcast and let other people listen to what you have to say so if you are interested in starting your own podcast again download the app anchor or go on to the desktop on your computer and just download anchor.fm and again it's very easy to use to get that started With that being said, we're going to have a musical segment here. Um, I want to start including more musical um, aspects in my my podcast here because I'm a big fan of music. Uh, So today's song I want to feature is called Gold Blooded. It's by the band Envisions. This is not off of an album. It's just a single they put out a couple of months ago. Um, I want to be able to show more of these bands because bands right now are not touring, especially in the metal scene where there's not a lot of money to be made. It's hard to make a lot of make a living off that touring alone, but especially not touring right now, a lot of bands are suffering. So if you like what you hear from this band or any kind of other artist, if you're able to spare a couple of bucks, buy a CD, buy a T-shirt, um, just do what you can. Follow them on Spotify, buy off of Apple Music, um, anything you can to support bands right now. Um, so without further ado, this again is going to be Gold Blooded by the band Envisions. I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and then we will continue the podcast right after the song. All right. Thank you so much, and away we go.
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Hope you guys enjoyed the sponsor and our musical segment here. We're going to get back into the Star Wars. Again, I want to thank Darby, Chisholm, and Miguel for joining me here. It's been really fun, guys. You guys have been awesome. I know people are going to like this episode. So we gotta, we're going to talk a little bit more about Star Wars, and uh, we'll kind of see where things go from there. We talked about during the break. Uh, we need to mention the good things about the Disney Star Wars stuff. So Disney bought Star Wars for like, what, four point something billion dollars? Well, so I, and honestly, if I'm going to be for real, um, it doesn't... I can't see Disney going anywhere else besides... I mean, it's Disney. <laughs> I can't see Star Wars going anywhere else besides, like, Disney. Like, I can't see them... I don't know, being like a DreamWorks property or anything like that. I could see them as Disney. But the things I will say about the Disney Star Wars is we got two good things out of it. We got Rogue One, which, again, gives one of the best Star Wars scenes of all time. That Darth oh, yeah. Vader scene. Best scene ever. Remember, remember we watched that in the theater and it was so quiet. You can hear, oh, like, a, you yes. can hear like a pen drop. And then that lightsaber came on. That was, the, and then it tied into the New Hope so well. Someone actually edited it where yeah. right after it will like tie into New Hope and it's so cool. cool. It is awesome, dude. That is one of the best scenes in Star Wars history. But one thing we do need to talk about here is the Mandalorian because John Favreau is in charge, and I feel like he understands what Star Wars is, mm-hmm. what it's yes. about. I. And I, I don't watch a lot of TV. I know you guys know that. I'm not a big TV watcher, but I got stoked every Friday when The Mandalorian dropped. Yeah. There were a few episodes I was kind of hit or miss about, but... <laughs> the Gunslinger. Yeah, The Gunslinger. Yeah. I think that's like, I think that was episode five. Four or five. Yeah, that there. one that one sucked. Uh, to be honest, that one was It was just because that guy was so annoying. He was, dude. I just, I'm glad he, glad he died, dude. But <laughs> there, there, that sounds horrible to say, but... But no, I think all of us here, we all love The Mandalorian. Yeah. I think it, yeah, yeah. it's... Yes. Everything about it was great. So what overall, why, so let me ask you guys this. Why do you guys think Mandalorian did so well? Because it was, it was received well by critics and fans. Why do you think this did so well and the episodes did not? Because they're better written. Things make True. sense. Yeah, okay. You know, even the most incredulous thing makes sense. It's written, you know, without anything being ham-fisted either. The way that uh, the Mandalorian's culture is fitted into the series is organic. The, the yeah. like every all the characters they react intelligently to things. And That's true. Yeah. Honestly, aside from that, they they were just smart with their callbacks. Albeit yeah. uh, Actually, no, I'll, I'll save uh, that little bit about the Jawas for later because uh, there's there's a bit of an interesting thing with the lore implications of that. But mm-hmm. basically, basically, just everything was just treated with with the amount of respect and intelligence um, that uh, it, everything should have been whilst introducing a very amazing and outright cool new character. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. What about you, Jism? Uh, basically the same as Darby. Like, it feels more down to earth. Like, it does. It doesn't seem as over the top as the uh, the Disney trilogy. I mean, there are some scenes that are like, yeah, it's pretty unrealistic, but well, I mean, right. it's not as is, bad. Over the yeah. top can be okay if it's done smart. True. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Which uh, the trilogy for Disney did not do. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was over the top, and it just just it felt like I was on a music park. Man, all the time. I love not, one that broke down that. often. I that love wasn't. hearing my ears pop every time Palpatine uh, bass boosts the lightning into space. Oh yeah, it didn't do anything. <laughs> I know. I was like, it, dude, it didn't I saw, even do anything either. Like, I saw that like, shot the ships, and it was like, all right, then that was, back. Here's the thing. Like here, I, I honestly going back to Rise of Skywalker again. That movie part of it reminded me of like a Michael Bay movie. It had like all like the cool. There's no substance. To what was going on. I'm like, dude, this seems like Michael Bay. That's honestly directly one of the best ways to go about it, yeah. And, and sometimes you got to shut your mind off, but I hate those Transformers movies. And I only care because I love Star Wars. I really do. Anyway, we'll get back to The Mandalorian. I apologize. Miguel, <laughs> buddy, what, uh, what do you, why do you think The Mandalorian works and why the new episodes don't? Hmm, I mean, Darby kind of hit the nail on the head. I know, he pretty much, he pretty much <laughs> did. He did a good job explaining yeah. why it works. I thought like John yeah. Favreau too is a better. He's just a smarter guy than yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. Like yeah. he he did like well I mean he did the Jungle Book the live action Jungle Book that he, was a good movie it was good he also did the Lion King I wasn't a fan of I know we saw it but like I wasn't a fan of the Lion King personally but most of the stuff that he's done has been a, he also did like the first Iron Man movie which I didn't know that and really? Iron Man yeah 
Wow. Yeah, he did. He did Iron Man two as well. But yeah, he did the first Iron Man movie. I was like, dude, this guy is. And he also did Elf. I was like, this guy's got like a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's got a lot like going Jeez, going on. He's some a, good movies. Yeah, he's, he's a talented dude. He's also he plays Happy yep. in like the yeah. So I'm like, dude, he kind of knows what's up. But again, Darby, you kind of really hit it, dude. Like it's just written better. It's just not when it's over the top. It's cool. Like I feel like. That's even the first episode. Anything can be done well if it's done intelligently and with a mediocre of uh, respect. Or, you know, as much respect as you can give it. I mean, you could probably make a Crazy Frog movie. And if it's done intelligently <laughs> and with as much respect uh, to both the audience and uh, what you're working with, it could be good. It's, it's, the, yeah, it's, it's that's part of true. the reason why the Dungeons & Dragons movie failed. It I just, didn't even admit it. They <laughs> made, they made, when, when, that come, when that come out? 2000. Oh, so it's oh, like okay. 20. I thought it was like recently. It's a recently. 20 year old fucking movie. I was like, how do we know here? You get one of the Waynes brothers being uh, the rogue of the party. The Waynes brothers. That's too good. <laughs> and so he's doing those high pitched fucking squeals every time uh, shit goes down. It's just like, oh, it's the big bad evil. Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Okay, let's get back to the Mandalorian. So, Mandalorian, um, again, I, 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 most there's eight episodes, and I talked to I talked to our friend Kyle about this here. What'd you guys think about them? <laughs> what? Sorry, I just. Oh, I thought you. I thought you. No, that sweet. I tweaked my voice a I, little. I thought it was like gonna say something. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but no. I was gonna ask you guys, what do you think about? Um, so Disney dropped them once a week, so they, it wasn't like all at once. Do you guys like it how they dropped it once a week, or would you prefer it to be all once so you can binge it? <sighs> Kyle uh, Kyle said that he likes once a week because it builds anticipation and people true. talking about it. But at the same time, if you have need something to do, especially during technically quarantine time, it'd be nice to just kind of binge, binge it. it all at once. But I don't mind the first. I don't mind one episode a week. It was fun because Chisholm and I we would talk about it every week. Like yeah. we see the episode and then we just talk about it all the time. And so like it was just really cool how that worked. I so I personally liked it. It was once a week, personally. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I personally don't think it matters. Yeah, I, like it, I think it really just it, it really does just depend on the person. I think I think it matters for Disney because the longer you get people talking about their show and all that yeah. stuff, like the more views you get over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just a you know a more steady flow of income for them. So I think yeah. it's just like they chose to go that route for the you know the money i guess yeah no that, that's true but it's I, also I like that. reminiscent yeah. of the times when we used to watch things on tv and we didn't couldn't just like willingly like put the show on whenever we that's wanted true to. Yeah, yeah. Really we actually had fucking to wait miss for saturday morning cartoons <laughs> yeah, too, i to really fucking miss saturday morning <laughs> <laughs> okay all right i don't it sounds like you really miss them man i miss my childhood too i know yeah. a lot easier I back can. in the no, day it's not even the childhood aspect it's just like uh like that's where all the good shows were before before the dark times before before streaming just kind of allowed you know certain things to go over the radar when they really shouldn't but that's that's a war for another day back to the mandalorian <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious so um mandalorian so do you guys have a favorite episode of the mandalorian Ooh, that's tough i know there's oh, a man. anything with ig88 Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. A great character. So I, um, also here's the thing, almost, I think almost every other, I think every episode had a new director, I think. What? That, what? Yeah, because like Taika Waititi did the last one, the, John Fravo did the first episode, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, is that her name? Um, she's in the Jurassic World movies. She's kind of hot. She directed episode four, the one where she goes, he goes to that village. So the, the, oh, yeah. the episodes had different directors. That worked well. Well, who did the Gunslinger one? Because they should be fired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know who did that one. That one again. It wasn't like. Don't get me wrong. I prefer that over watching. You know, Last Jedi or anything. True that. But yeah, that, that one was a little bit, um, little underwhelming, especially because remember the part of the end when that one guy shows up, like at the very end, it shows his foot. Oh yeah. Who was that? Do we know? That was, might was that, be Boba Fett. That's that, what that's I thought. Theory. Either that or it was not, it wasn't Moth Gideon, was it? It could have been. He had a cape, right? Yeah. Could have been. That could be. Yeah. I know. I heard it was Boba Fett as well. That would be pretty cool. I heard Boba Fett's supposed to be in the next season, yeah. which would be interesting. But I don't know, dude. I I think I really liked Episode Three. I think that's the one where they bring the child back, and then the Mandalorian's like, "Okay, I'm gonna." Oh, that's what he. It kind of yeah. it kind of remind me a little bit of like 
like a little bit of John Wick a little bit, like John Wick yeah, three. Yeah, like when he's going towards. Uh, yeah, and then like everyone's at, yeah everyone's after him, and then like the whole action scene it was so good. I was like, dude, this is this is fantastic. I like that episode, and I liked um, I liked the very last one too. That was really oh, yeah. good. That was really fantastic. Do you have a favorite, Miguel? Dude, if you, if you I remember. have to rewatch this. Okay, that's it's, fair. It, that's that's a tough question. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen it as well. So because like the first three were all so good. Yeah, all three were great. The Yo, first three. Do you guys know anything about like I think it was like the one of the last episodes the the black guy Moff Gideon. Gideon. Okay, Moff so Gideon. Is he a yeah. Sith? Oh, so this is my theory. Yeah, let's hear. It. So the way he's dressed in like the dark dark uh, dark saber. Yeah, makes the, me think he's trying to become a Sith. And that's why he wants Baby Yoda, because I think he wants to extract the midichlorians and, like, insert See, that would be cool. Because uh, apparently that's something that's in the extended universe. Yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's my guess. Because he... Because he looks like a Sith wannabe. Yeah, he does. Like, I, I thought it was Darth Vader at first. I was like, he kind of looked like Darth Vader's his, suit a little his, bit. His lightsaber? It's a dark saber. Yeah, the dark saber. It's a dark saber. Yeah. yeah, so the dark saber is a bit of expanded lore I know a little bit about. Basically, it's a, a lightsaber that's incredibly ancient... Um, don't ask me about black lightsaber crystals because that's in canon limbo right now. Mm. Um, because the, they first appeared in uh, Force Unleashed, and then Kathleen Kennedy's just like, no, they don't exist. You got canon. But anyway, so the dark saber is named be- because of its ubiquitously, uh, you know, black blade and its unique shape and but anyway it's super super unique and uh, from an era way long uh, before uh, all the traditional stuff we know of star wars and so the mandalorian stole it from the from the jedi temple at some point and that's been handed down through um their generations as kind of like the, their symbol of uh, of ultimate status so is there no. there's only is there only one or there is only you... one Okay. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. So that's pretty cool. Interesting. And, uh, and the Mandalorians used to hold it. That's tight, dude. Yeah. So they confirmed that season two is going to come out in October. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to see what the... That's the case. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. that's really interesting to me because, uh, like, so in the cartoon, I think, in... Uh, yeah, the Clone, the Clone Wars, Wars Yeah, Darth Maul, doesn't he have... Oh, the, yeah. He way before it, even he? that, the... the there's a group of Mandalorians that Anakin and Obi Wan interact with, uh, and uh, one of them is just like, "This lightsaber, our my ancestors took from the Jedi Temple uh, multiple millennia ago." And he turns it on, and it makes that eerie, fucking, unreal noise, and takes on that more actual blade-like shape, and uh, um, that's uh, that's when he duels Obi Wan with it, and it's one of the uh, only instances of a non-Force user. Being able to actually out lightsaber fight uh, um, a Jedi almost, <laughs> and then from from then on, it appears in Rebels because the weird oh yeah fucking Rebel, blue haired Mandalorian chick uh, gets given it, and uh, yeah, she ends up becoming the gal with all the status. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know Dude, that. Crazy. That actually is cool. I didn't know about. It. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. So one concern I have about Mandalorian is yeah, sure. why does the why does Mando not know about Jedi? Like you know, I've wondered that. I've wondered that too. I wonder maybe maybe like, they'll explain it, but I don't. I wonder that actually. Like, like how does he not know about Jedi? Like, we're had, the like, Mandalorians are like Jedi hunters, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. What well, What makes you think that he doesn't know? Because he, he doesn't know anything know. about it. Because like when he sees Baby Yoda use the Force, he has no idea. Oh yeah, what that he doesn't is. even know what that is. And then the the blacksmith, uh, she mentions the Jedi, and he doesn't know what they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought I, I had to rewatch that I, to I catch didn't even that. Because yeah. I think you and I were talking about that a little bit. A little. It just it doesn't make sense because they have such a deep history, the Jedi and the Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, I have got to explain that later for this. You okay. See? All right. After the Clone Wars, man, like uh, the planet that uh, all the Mandalorian stuff uh, went on from then, their culture, it, it basically got uh, ransacked. Oh, hello there. It basically got <laughs> it got ransacked by the Empire so hard that they basically lost a good amount of their history and culture. In the expanded universe, uh, Boba Fett actually manages to find that and brings the Mandalorians into kind of a renaissance. And they also try to take over the galaxy, of course. But um, basically, uh, they've lost so much much of their culture at this point in the timeline that, uh, um, yeah, there's no wonder they don't remember uh, anything about uh, how to fight the Jedi or what the Force is, because Hmm, that's that's gone. That's interesting. Maybe they'll explain that a little bit in Season 2, because I think you told me about that when you rewatched it. Like, Mm -hmm. why... 
does he not know? Which is very, it was very interesting. So, okay. Awesome. That's fantastic. Well, let's go ahead here. Just a couple more things. Let's go ahead. I just want to hear this from you guys. So I want to hear your favorite Star Wars movie and your favorite Star Wars video game. And then we might end it. We'll see how it goes and we'll go from there. So whoever wants to start, favorite game, favorite movie. I'd say my favorite game is Battlefront 2, the original. Not the... Oh, yeah. The old, you don't like the new yeah, one? Yeah, man. Uh, I haven't played the new one, actually. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. It's not that good. Yeah, because the original had the, the Mos Eisley level yeah. where you deal the, the heroes. Oh, I used to yeah. play that well, so much. That where you could be all the Jedis or all the, all the Sith. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Head on. Uh, that, that was the most fun mode ever. It was, dude. I wish they would have... Br- they kind of brought it back in the, the first reimagining it's of Battlefront. Not it's not the same. It's like heroes versus villains mm-hmm. a little bit, but... Battlefront, well, the one that came out in 2015, was so bare bone. It was just so disappointing, dude. I'd actually say the best Star Wars game ever, probably Knights of the Republic. Oh, dude, yeah. I haven't cool. played it, but it's, it's prestigious. Game. What about Republic Commando? You ever played that one? I have not. That was no. cool. It's like, it kind of reminded me, yeah, it was a first person shooter, but anyway. All right, what, Bounty what, Hunter. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. What's your favorite movie? Either Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. Last Jedi? Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I'm just Last Jedi is my. Most hated movie. I know it is. I would rather watch Attack of Clones than Last Jedi. Whoa! Yeah. Dang, that's a low blow, dude. Well, that Attack of Clone terrible. has the least... sand scene, so that's there's true. that for it. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't like sand. It's coarse <laughs> and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Is that pretty good? Yeah. Would I, would I be a good Anakin? Sure. Yeah. I slaughtered him like animals. <laughs> I hate them. I hate <laughs> them. Dude, I could be the young things. <laughs> Padme, you're pr- wait a minute. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't make- <laughs> Padme, you're breaking my heart. It's Anakin, you're breaking my heart. You're going oh, down a path man. I can't follow. <laughs> what? You kidding me? Okay. Anyway, uh, Darby, what's your favorite movie and game? Star Wars. Right, so I think I think uh, this like reconciling with myself. I think uh, New Hope is probably my favorite Star Wars movie because uh, ah, I I feel the deepest connection with like uh, the the air of mysticism that it kind of brings and well and you saw it in theaters with your grandparents right that too that yeah. too but more than just that it's just like it's I don't know what it is but the hero's journey and uh, Obi Wan uh, um being the way he is in that film speaks mm. to me on a deep level and I feel like it's influenced me in many aspects of um what's it almost my life but uh, i use i use it the most for um for some inspiration for things when i run D &D. so i think that's probably one of the biggest things in regards to that favorite game though oh man um so i i would default to to saying knights of the old republic also but Mm -hmm. uh, um unfortunately uh I feel like because it was a bigger part of my childhood and just because it's actually, actually gonna change my mind. Rogue Squadron. Oh, Rogue yeah, Squadron. yeah. Yes. Dude, that that's, game was... That's why I'm so fucking excited for the new uh, freaking Rogues game coming out. And because I'm just looking at it, I'm just like, okay, I'm a little bit weirded out by the fact that they're going to be putting uh, the U-Wing in yeah, as a ship. Yeah, yeah. Because there's so many other cool designs they can bring back uh, from the expanded universe. But the rest of it, that's my fucking jam. <laughs> that's my fucking jam. But uh, oh. what's it? So I, I kind of have my own sort of thing I want to quickly, quickly sidetrack into about Battlefront 2015. I liked it because it felt like Star Wars Call of Duty. <laughs> I, th- I see. I, I thought. I thought it felt like Battlefield with Star a Wars little, skins. A little, yeah, like the EA thing. made Battlefield, or is that what it's called? Battle. It, it yeah, Battlefield. Oh, yeah. A lot like and, Battlefield. and so it when, does, I, when I went which, to uh, you know. when I went into Battlefront uh, Two, the new one, oh. I'm just kind of like, I don't like the class system. I don't like. Uh, that I hated it. Yeah, I hated the class system. I want to customize my dude. I want to be my my envisionment of what I'd want to be yeah. in that era in the Star Wars universe, even right. if I'm just restricted to just being a clone. Or a rebel soldier, or you know, insert things uh, like that. It's just, it's just too restricting. And it is. I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. At least the weapon customizations were cool. It was cool. It just again, like I felt like they had to pretty much stop the game when it came out of those those loot boxes. They had a, then they pretty much stopped the game and had to like redo it while the game was out. Oh, EA. It's, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. but the thing is, it's EA, better now, but it, it, people don't play it anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, there's still some people playing it, but with the fact yeah. that its development cycle for new content is finished, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's going to peter out, unfortunately. It is, for sure. That's what happened to the 
I mean, the first Battlefront was sixty dollars. Then you got to buy that season pass. If you don't get the season pass, you don't get all that content. EA just drain our money, dude. I'm telling you. It's all about the money with them, dude. I'm telling you. But I mean, the game looked good. The game it looked good. At least it played okay. At least Fallen Order was a big enough punch in the balls for them to realize that uh, their their methods aren't always uh, going to be a guaranteed success, and they can branch out. For sure, absolutely. All right, Miguel, do you want to go, or I can go? Sure, I'll go. I'll good, go. good. We'll save the best for last. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> doy. Is that what it is? Yeah, know. doy. Okay. Okay. So, good. Go ahead, Miguel. <laughs> dude, there's, there, I mean, there's some good games out there for Star Wars. I mean, yeah, we've had some good memories, those, dude. Uh, there's some that I totally forgot about, and I just now remembered talking. Dude, Rogue Squad, this, when Darth but... brought that up, I yeah, forgot, I forgot about, about that. That game was too. so that was a fun. Good one. Yeah, that yeah. game was sick. Also, because Battlefront, the old Battlefronts were really cool, the ones on the PSP were actually pretty cool, too. Because... Oh, I never, yeah, I never played they, those. But. Yeah, they're, one of them actually had sort of a story to it. That's cool. And you can customize your guy more, and, like, you can... I mean, it's it's the same game as, like, the ones on the PSP, yeah, yeah. but they added more, like, customization options and stuff. Right. But I thought it was, was kind of fun. But, uh, but it's not my favorite. Yeah. By any means... <laughs> But um, Unleashed, uh, Force Unleashed. Yeah, that, Ooh, yeah. that probably my favorite game. Well, I, I talk about that one a I th- lot. I know the thing is, what I liked about it. I mean, it was a hack and slash, but I really liked the story in that game. Yeah, like the first one. And I, it bums me out that it's like yeah. not considered canon anymore. Yeah, I know. So that, I still do in my heart, dude. Because <laughs> it's so Damn. good. It, it was a really cool story to like. It was you cool. know, Darth Vader's apprentice and all that. Yeah, like, it was awesome. I've always wanted to see a Force Unleashed movie. That should have stayed in the canon. Honestly, I, I like, wish so. Yeah, I think that was cool. Nice, dude. But right. yeah, and oh, but also I have to mention it because I I freaking love the racing game Star Wars Episode oh, yeah. One Racer. The pod racer. Yeah, Dude. that game. That game was sweet. Dude, I'm like I was playing it on like N64. It's and, like, so yeah, fun. I played the crap out of that. I don't even know why. That's like, fun. I don't remember if it was a good game or not. Honestly, but nowadays it was cool that you could freaking play. You know, you could be a do and be any of the uh, the pod racers. Yeah, dude. It was, yeah, dude. It's a little kid. I know, it was fun, dude. Honestly, even probably if I put it in today, I probably still wouldn't mind playing it. I mean, it's just, it's a racing game. So, I mean, they released. They're they're re releasing it. I think it's on on Switch, Switch, and I think it's coming to PlayStation and Xbox. Really? That's so funny. I know. I'll probably want to, I don't know, dude. That'd be fun. I might have to get that. But, um, what about movie? Uh, Movie wise, um,. It's probably either A New Hope or uh, or Episode 3. Rooms of Sith. And that seems I, to be a lot of people's favorite. Honestly, it's yeah. a good film. It really is a good, just despite the dialogue. Somewhere. I guess, like, Episode 3 for me, like, I don't know. It wasn't necessarily, like, a great movie. Right. But I like the characters that came out of that one. I really like General Grievous, as I said earlier. Like, yeah, he's his cool. His backstory is pretty cool, yeah. I think. He, you know, he how he became a cyborg right. was really cool, and like how he kind of got his story kind of <clears> got <throat> intertwined with uh, uh, what's his name, the emperor. He kind of uh, freaking he found out about General Grievous because he was like a crazy, really good warrior in his yeah. on his planet and stuff, and so he, the emperor found out about General Grievous, and mm-hmm. they, they kind of like sabotaged him like he had Count yeah. Dooku like pretty much rig their ship to blow up yeah and then uh the emperor took him in and he was all like basically about to die but it was like keeping him alive in like his test tube thing I don't know right um and basically was like hey like we I, you know I can free you and your people and give you a second chance and stuff and uh, you know and you can be like this crazy like sith type dude yeah and uh you know gave him all his his gear and his new body that i think he looks really cool with the that's cool arms, dude the four lightsabers and all that i'll look into that that's actually a pretty cool it, it's like a cool backstory it, yeah. it is a cool backstory yeah and and it kind of shows like how freaking manipulative the the emperor was too he's a great villain yeah i mean maybe not so much in the new movie but overall <laughs> like his, like, the way he's able to, like, do those kind of things, like, manipulate people. I mean, obviously he got Anakin, you know, turned into Darth Vader. But, like, yeah, the Emperor, I feel like not let people give him credit. Because you only really see him in, like, what, Return of the Jedi? I think that's, like, the first time we really see his, 
fa- but I mean, yeah. he's working behind the scenes, but right, he, he you look behind, behind the, the scenes, stuff, yeah, he's, it's he's really, he's really video, cool. Man. Yeah, I think that's really awesome. Dude, sick. That's yeah. awesome, dude. All right. You go. Me go. You go. So I've played a lot of Star Wars games. I remember on the 64, I played pod racing. Do you guys remember like Shadow of the Empire? Yeah. yeah. Remember that game? I remember, Dash I remember playing. Dash Rendar. Dash Rendar. Yeah, dude. That game was pretty <laughs> cool. Uh, Rose Squadron, I played a lot. Do you ever, you ever play Jedi? Um, is Jedi Outcast? Do you ever play those? I've, no, I've no. seen a lot of stuff of them. I still yeah. need to play them. But yeah, the For Jedi sure. Outcast games and uh, what was it? That all start. That whole. Um, what was it? Because the fucking the main character Kyle Katarn, um, yeah. he's he's somebody that I wish they included, but he's just now another expanded universe thing that Kathleen decided to Thanos snap out of existence. That's right, she did. Yeah. Uh, but what's Thanos it? Kyle snap. Katarn as a character uh, um, is is at least interesting because he's about as strong as Luke, but he's one of those kind of like snarky realist <laughs> sort of characters. So um, what's it? The game series, though, it began with Dark Forces, which was basically yeah. Star Wars Doom. It, it looks Ooh, like cool. like yeah. Doom, all two D and stuff. I like I like me some Doom, dude. And then uh, yeah, it, fall, it followed through uh, um, a lot of uh, stuff on the computer, and uh, yeah, it was it was like this nice little side story where you got to instead of you know doing the sort of things you'd normally do in Star Wars games, it was a first yeah. person shooter. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's awesome. That's why I like Republic Commando because that was that too. But yeah, that for me, cool. I would say it's a tie between again Force Unleashed for me as well because Miguel and I had some good memories with that. That game was really fun. But also again, I think we've all had good memories like Battlefront Two. To be honest, I never actually played the first the original yeah. Battlefront because <laughs> well, yeah, the second, yeah, one, was yeah, the second one was I know way better. So it's a tie between those two, and um, I would say you know, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite. Again, that movie. I was telling children in the car, I was like, you know, sometimes movies, like, the first movie's always so good, that sometimes movies get worse, and I saw them, like, sometimes the video games, video games kind of start out a little bit, you know, clump, but they think better over time, but I feel like movies like The Dark Knight, um, Empire Strikes Back, I'm trying to be like another, like, guess The Godfather 2, I guess, like, there's certain movies that are better than the Shrek. original. Shrek 2. <laughs> Shrek 2 is actually a pretty good movie. I'm not going to lie to you. It was a good movie. Shrek 3 and 4 were uh, terrible. Yeah. It's a little side hint. They are doing a Shrek. It's weird. They're doing a Shrek 5, but it's also a reboot of the franchise. Shrek 5 reboot. That's, what? And it's going to look like... Why? Because <laughs> yeah. They're bringing it back. So they're bringing back the original characters, but they're also changing the animation style. It's going to look like the Minions animation. Like, not like what they look like, but like that type of animation. Oh, the... the- yeah, I don't know why they're doing that, but I don't know. How do we get the how do we get the Shrek? Oh, sequels. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite. It's inspired me as like wanting to write fantasy stories and like everything about that movie is perfect. It's like the only movie I give a ten out of ten to, besides like the Dark Knight. It's that good. Oh yeah. It's so good. I could watch that movie I could literally watch over and over. And just love it every time. So good. So Especially good. The, the Cloud City scene with uh, Vader versus Luke. Oh, that scene. So good. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, there's so many things. I'm just like, ugh. It is so, and then, of course, the biggest plot twist of all time. Right? I mean, seriously. You thought, like, a good horror movie had a good plot twist, but nah, brother. I'm your father. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm like, well, I don't think dark. Well, I mean, actually, he is black. So he could say that. Yo, what's up, mate? I'm your father. Luke be like, sever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Empire for sure, just best movie ever made. So, all right, guys. Well, I want to thank everybody on this podcast. Darby, you are hilarious, and I love you, dude. You are. Thank you. Thank you for all your wonderful Star Wars insight. You are fantastic. You're very welcome. But before we finish, I have a question for you three, and it's going to be probably one of those really, really brutal hot take questions. Okay. Oh man. Go ahead. How many decades until we get to a full fledged uh, like reboot or remake of New Hope? You know, really quick, really quick before we end it, I'm glad you brought that up. I thought about this because I'm I'm shocked they haven't like remade Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like actually yeah. just try to do it again. They continued it, which I do appreciate. I rather them continue than remake. You know, it's funny, dude. I think they will eventually when we're like in our fifties and sixties. I really think they will. I think they will remake it. I uh, I don't want them to. Yeah, when they're out of ideas. Because Hollywood, as I said, Hollywood is running out of ideas, and Star Wars is the biggest franchise ever. So I I say probably in the next 40 40 years, when we're like 60 years old, I think they'll remake it. Absolutely, I do. I don't know who's going to play Luke, but I'll play Luke. (laughs) 
Why is that so funny? Why are you guys laughing? No one else laughs except you two. And why is that funny? I didn't yeah. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, but Darby, I agree. I think they will. I think they're going to remake it. I, I, I'll I, be interested to see how that works out, but I don't want them to. I they're, really don't. They're Not. perfect the way they are. I know. The original trilogy is perfect. Like, it really is a perfect... Well, I mean... I'm not a... <laughs> not literally. Well, well, yeah, like, Return of the Jedi, I have some problems with, but overall, I I like it. So, I mean, I like them all, so... Yeah. Do you think they'll remake it, Miguel? Do you think they'll remake oh, it? Oh, totally, yeah, man. I mean, yeah. it's just like everything else, man. They ruin everything that's holy. <laughs> <laughs> they do, don't they? They absolutely do. It's oh. for the money, man. It is for the they money. They have to, eventually. They will. It's just like Spider-Man. What are they gonna... Oh, remake dude. Remake that movie, like... Times. And we've been al- and we've been alive for all three of those remakes. Yeah, that's hilarious, dude. That's and stupid. the Batman movies. I mean, they've made oh so many gosh, yeah. iterations of Batman. Yeah, we and do we're different getting... actors playing as Batman. Yeah, because we because the ones I I mean I've been alive for the Christian Bale one and then Ben Affleck. Now they're doing Robert Pattinson. Yeah. So yeah, it, it won't surprise me yeah, if we get if we get a remake. Like it's gonna be weird. Yeah, man, because the the younglings of of you know the next generation when we're like freaking old as dust, you know, like they're right. gonna have to know about Star Wars too. You know? I know. The thing is, though, one, I watch one day when I have kids, I'm gonna show them Star Wars. They're gonna be like, dude, this sucks. Yeah. I, I know. I know they're <laughs> right? gonna hate. Yeah, yeah. Then the new one's gonna come out. They're gonna be like, this is the best movie. I'm like, you guys have no idea how awesome <laughs> yeah, this was. And I wasn't even alive for the original ones. Right? So. Old, old geezers. Who yeah. Are like, you guys don't know the original. I was there with I know, we're gonna be, you. You don't know what it was like <laughs> back in my day. They're going to be like The Last Jedi is the best movie ever. I'm like, you get there. Well, what's funny <laughs> is that, like, you know, the people, by comparison, the people who are older than us, yeah. they, you know, they were, you know, our age when the original one came yeah, out. Yeah, isn't so that weird? already saying that right. about, like, us. I, 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 I remember, actually, when I, I, wor- I worked at the theater when Force Awakens came out. And then uh, I saw Kyle and Chisholm there, and I was really, really mad at them. That's and I don't, I, don't, I don't usually get mad at my friends, but I was, they came in my line, too. I was yeah, like, did. It's like, you guys, I swear if you tell me anything, I'm going to freaking... I don't think we spoiled anything. You didn't, but one guy did when it came out. But I remember... Um, Screw that guy. I know, I worked in sessions, but I had to help go clean, so I just asked a guy. He was a big Star Wars guy. Star Wars shirt, had the dad body, had the belly, had oh, the hat yeah. on. Um, it come, it comes out, and I like to ask people, you know, like, hey, what'd you think? The guy's like, dude, that was like the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. That was just a slap in the face of Star Wars. I, I can't, he's like, I, I can't even right now. Like, he's having a hard time breathing, he's a little bit chubby. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he, he hated it. But then I saw some kids going like, yo, that was sick. Stella. Stella. And like, they loved it, but the adults like, man, that sucked. Like, that's going to be us, dude, when yeah. we're... But anywho, I that's a little side tangent here. Again, I want to we'll, we'll we'll wrap things up. Again, Darby, thank you, Chisholm. You're very loved right. your insight, Chandler. You did awesome, and Miguel, buddy, thanks for coming back, dude. dude I hope to. Feedback. I know. I hope you I hope to get you to come back on again. All of you guys, honestly, and then uh, we'll talk again sometime. Anyone, anything, you guys want to say anything else? Not much else. I no, not really. Say. Awesome. Okay. Well, this has been the Chandler Burton podcast. I want to thank you guys for listening to our. Star Wars podcast. Hope you guys laughed. Hope you guys had a good time. This has been the Chandler Burton Podcast. Signing out. Have a good one. Peace.